All right, so now that we got the truck up on the turn plates, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the machine we're gonna be using today. This is the Jumbo 3D Super from Pinnacle Automotive Systems, and it's actually a 3D imaging aligner. Um, it is the only 3D imaging aligner available for heavy duty truck in North America. Everybody else is still using the old uh, CCD systems. Um, and this, the way this machine works is it uh, shines infrared light out from LEDs. They bounce off reflectors that are mounted on targets on the wheels. That light comes back to cameras mounted on these two towers. It uses the checkerboard pattern on those targets to make calculations and figure out what all our angles are such as cam camber, caster, toe, thrust angle, all the angles we need to make sure this truck drives straight down the road and doesn't wear tires out. Uh, some of the advantages of having a 3D imaging aligner is that we don't have any uh, expensive electronics hanging off the wheels, no uh, battery drain issues, so we're not gonna have, any, uh, have to replace any batteries over three or four year period. And if one of your techs drops one of these targets, it is much less likely to be damaged and you don't have to worry about getting them recalibrated or repaired. So let's go ahead and jump into the software. We'll make all of our vehicle selections and then we'll hang the targets and go on from there. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and click my start button. We'll load into our software. And, and first thing I'm gonna do is pick the truck type. And this is a truck with one front and two rear axles. And down at the bottom here, you see we can do an axle-based or a frame-based alignment. Um, generally, like 99% of the time, you're gonna do an axle-based alignment. So let's go ahead and go to our next screen. Now this screen is important. It's, it's gonna tell you how to position the truck. So all this screen is telling you is that when you get one of these machines installed, you're gonna have a line painted on your floor that's at uh, seven meters away from these towers. And we just wanna make sure that our two rear axles are behind that line. That's all the screen means. All right, we're gonna use the default user. And now we're gonna to go to the US Heavy Commercial Vehicle Database. And I am just gonna use the search function here. It makes finding my vehicle a little bit faster. So I know this is a Freightliner, Cascadia. We use the US Heavy Commercial Vehicle Database. All right, we'll click next. All right, this screen is asking us to measure the, the frame gap distance from the outside of the wheel to the frame. Um, generally, you can not worry about this screen. If you have uh, one of your rear ends is way out of whack, you'll be able to see it just by standing at the back and looking at it. So I recommend us go ahead and hit next. We'll move on. All right, now it's time to go ahead and hang our targets. So we'll go hang the targets on the wheels real quick and um, then we'll move on. All right, so we've got our targets hung on the vehicle, and if you're wondering how I know what targets go where, uh, software makes it really simple. We hang F1 on the front axle, B2 on the middle axle, and B1 on the rearmost axle. So now our next step, we'll just punch in our mileage. Hit next. Now it wants our tag number. You can also put in any other customer information you'd like there. Now it's going to search for our targets. All right, found them on both sides. Now it's going to move us on to the next screen and we're ready to do our rolling run out compensation. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the start button and all we have to do is jump in the truck, drive it backwards, drive it forwards, follow the prompts on the screen and that's all there is to it. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put my steering wheel lock on because it is pretty important when we do our rolling run out, we don't want this, the wheels to be moving. All right, now I'm gonna fire it up. Make sure we got good air pressure. Yep, we're okay. Now I'm gonna turn the parking brake off. Throw in reverse. And now all I gotta do is watch the screen. Come back nice and slow. Just a little more. Stop there. I am gonna hold here while it gets its breathing. All right, now he's put it in forward, come forward. Just a little more. All right, and we're good. So I'm gonna put it back in neutral, put my parking brake on, now we can shut it off. 
I can go ahead and safely remove my steering lock. Now our next step is going to be to go ahead and go chalk the wheels and then we can go do our caster sweep. All right, so we got our wheels chalked, our runout was good. Now, if you have an excessive runout, something like a, a bent wheel or a loose clamp, it will tell you right here, but everything was good with this one. So let's click our next arrow. And now it's gonna tell me to apply our brake pedal lock and pull the pins, and we're about to do our caster swing. Pretty simple, you just turn the wheel to the left and to the right. But instead of using a brake pedal lock, I'm just gonna go ahead and hold my foot on the brake. All right, so now I'm just gonna turn my ignition on. I'm gonna hold my foot hard on the brake. And all I gotta do is watch the screen. And for whatever reason you can't see the screen, you can just look at those arrows on the tower. Those are pointing to the left because I need to turn left. We'll hold there. Now back to the right. We'll hold there. Now we go straight ahead. All right, now it wants us to steer the wheels to zero. This part can be a little touchy, so just take it slow. there and let it take its reading. All right, and now we got some measurements. All right, so we've got some readings on our truck now, and this first screen it takes us to is just an overview of the whole truck um, to give us an idea of what everything looks like. You can actually go here and click on B1, B2, and F1, and you can go to axles individually, but I like to stick to the same workflow every time I do this. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna click the next arrow in the bottom right corner, and that's gonna take us um, to axle B2. That's not the rearmost axle, but the one in front of it. And it looks like we need to make an adjustment on this. Our thrust angle is out by just a little bit from spec. We're at 0.07, we need to get it down to at least under 0.05. So we're gonna have to put some shims on the right side of axle B2. And you're probably wondering how you know how thick a shim to put in there. Well, a good rule of thumb is um, if, we need, if we're at 0.03 and we need to make a change of 0.03, we need to put a 1 32nd shim in there. Uh, if you want to move at 0.06, then we put a 2 32nd shim in there and so on and so forth. So it looks like um, if we put three 1 32nd shims in there, they'll probably be a little too much. So we're going to try to stick uh, two of the 1 32nd shim in there, and that should get us pretty dang close to bang on. So let's uh, head to the back of the truck, and we'll show you guys how to drop those shims in. All right guys, we're back here at the second drive axle. And uh, this is where we gotta make our adjustment, right here on the front of this uh, air leaf spring. The first thing we gotta do, we gotta bust these two bolts loose. And on the opposite side over there, that's where we gotta put our shims. So, I'm just gonna stick my big three quarter inch impact in there. It usually takes a pretty stout one. These are generally pretty dang tight. You don't need a ton of room. Remember, we just got to put two 1 32nd shim in there. So a 16th of an inch is all you need. All right, that one's good. All right, and it's worth noting that your brakes have to be released before you do this. If your brakes aren't released, you're not going to be able to make an, uh, an adjustment because these are, it's all going to be locked up. So we got our bolts loose. Now we got to grab our port of power and I'll show you guys how to position it in there so we can push this forward and get the truck back in the spec. All right, guys, we got our port of power here. Uh, it's a pretty simple device. It's basically just a hand operated hydraulic cylinder. It comes in real handy. You can pick this up at any, uh, any parts house or uh, Lowe's Home Depot. I think they got stuff like this too. All right, and now we're just gonna stick our ram in one end on the spring and the other end is gonna be butted up against the hanger here right above the axle. And it doesn't take much force at all. I'm barely applying any pressure to this, this uh, 
this handle and I can already see the axles moving. Now, if, you, if something's bound up and you're having to pump real hard, you need to go ahead and stop and, and take a look around, something's wrong. And I got uh, both my shims here and I'm gonna drop one on uh, either side of both of those bolts that I loosened. Pretty easy, there's one. There's two. Now let's grab my ram, back off my pressure. And all we gotta do is tighten up the bolts and we should be good. All right, we're gonna tighten our bolts up here. And I wanna tell you a little bit about my impact. This is an SP Tools three quarter inch drive impact. And to be honest, it's an absolute monster of an impact, well over a thousand foot pounds of torque. So it should have plenty of goochum to get the job done here. All right guys, so we made our adjustment. As you can see, we are well within spec. We're at minus 0.03, which is within spec, so we should be just fine on that. So we're gonna to move to the next axle. Just have to click my next arrow. Um, this next screen is actually the same axle as just showing the camera, or the camera and the toe. Um, none of this is adjustable, so I wouldn't worry about it too much. If it's way out of spec, then you've probably, you've got something else going on in the rear, something's bent, something like that. But generally you won't see anything in the red on this screen. All right, now it's wanting us to move to the front axle. So we got to make sure our steering wheel is at zero. So we'll go ahead and adjust that, get it straight, and then we're ready to adjust our toe. All right, so we got our wheels in the straight ahead position. I did that just by hopping up in the cab and bumping the steering wheel just a little bit. It's very sensitive, so you just need to bump it just a bit to get it in the green. So we'll go ahead and hit our next arrow. All right, looks like all of our readings for the front axle are in the green. Uh, caster, camber, and toe are all good. So no adjustments needed there. We'll hit our next arrow. And now we need just a small adjustment on the rearmost axle. Well, same story as the, uh, as the second axle, we're at 0.07. So we're gonna pop a couple of 16th inch shims in there, get it in the spec, and this truck should be good to go. Good. All right, so we dropped our shims in the rearmost axle and that's gonna be our scrub axle. And we are dead on the money. So we should be good with this truck. I'm gonna go ahead and click the next arrow. And that's showing all of our additional measurements. All of our uh, camber and tow readings are good in the green. Now it's loading up our report. And we can either save this as a PDF or go ahead and print it. But as I scroll through, you can see our before and after. We're good all in that right-hand column. Everything's in the green. The customer's gonna be happy. So let's go ahead and print this out and hand it in the customer and we'll get this truck back on the road. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for us in the cutting edge garage today. Um, big thanks to Mr. Jerry Fry, the three axle alignment guy. Please look at his page on Facebook and LinkedIn if you need any more info on him. Very knowledgeable technician. He's been doing uh, three axle alignments for literally decades. Um, big thanks also to SP Tools, the Cutting Edge Automotive and Pinnacle Automotive System. F SP Tools has some outstanding power tools and hand tools that made this job a cakewalk. Pinnacle Automotive System provided the, uh, the alignment machine that was an absolute breeze to use. And of course, thanks to Cutting Edge for letting us use their garage space. Um, please, if you guys uh, enjoyed this video and you learned something, please hit the like button, subscribe. We're going to be doing a ton of these how-to videos. And for more information on the, on the uh, Jumbo 3D Super, if you guys want to get one, please visit PinnacleAutomotiveSystems.com or CEASUSA. And if you're interested in any of the hand tools, go to SPToolsUSA.com. I'm Jacob Seigerwald, and we'll see you next time.